today we're going to be looking at the subject of vectors. Now, a vector is a quantity that has a direction and magnitude. So, therefore, it shows how far something is and where it's going to be. So, how to write vectors? A vector is normally written like this. This is vector A. It's got an underline. In books, you'll see without the underline in bold. This next to it is the column vector. 2, 3 means 2 right and 3 up. Vector B is minus 1, minus 4. That means 1 left and 4 down. You often see them written like this, x, y, with an arrow above it. This means from the point x to point y. Resultant vectors are where you're basically adding vector A and B. You're going from the beginning of A to the end of B. Vector A is 2, 3. Vector B is 3, 0. And we're going to be going from point A to point B. So we're adding A and B. We add the column vectors like so. And the simple thing to do is you just add the two top numbers and add the two bottom numbers. So our final vector the vector that goes from the beginning of A to the end of B is 5, 3. 5 right and 3 up. Multiplication by a scalar. Now, a scalar has magnitude but no direction. So, it's size without direction. Here's Monsieur Mathematique. He's going in that direction. This is the vector A. He now wants to go twice as far in the same direction. So, this is two lots of A. It's twice the distance, but in exactly the same direction. These lines are parallel because they're in the same direction, whether they are following on from each other or side by side. What if I want to go backwards, though? So here's Monsieur Mathematique going in direction A. What if he wants to go the same distance, but back in the same direction backwards? It's just minus A. So an example, we're going to be describing the vector AD, here is a trapezium. We've got A, B, and 2A noted on there. We can go in the direction of the vectors, but we can't go AD. So to get from AD, we need to go A, B, C, D, round like that. So how do we do this? First off, we go A, then we move round B, and then we go backwards on ourselves, which is minus 2A. Note the direction the arrow for the vector is pointing in. If we collect our terms, we get minus A plus B. So this is the vector from A to D. Example 2. A, B and C are midpoints of their respective lines. We want to find the vector for O to B. So there's our midpoints noted. Now, we want to go from O to B, so we have to go O, P, P, B. So first of all, work, let's work out what PQ is. We have to go backwards on ourselves, so that's minus 2C and plus 2A. Since we only want half of it, P to B, it's just half of that, which is minus C plus A. However, we also want to get OP. So OP, it's just two lots of C, since C is up to the halfway mark. So O to B, we have to go OP and PB. So if you add up what PB is, we get minus C plus A. And if you add up what OP is, we have our 2C. Collect the like terms, we find it C plus A. Now, C is goes from O to C, and the A part goes from C to B. You can see it's parallel. And this is where we're going to prove some lines are parallel here. We want to find out that NM is parallel to AB. We've got B, we've got A in those directions. Those are our two lines we have to show are parallel. N is the midpoint of OB, M is the midpoint of OA, OA equals all of vector A and OB equals vector B. So, A to B equals A to O and then O to B, which is minus A plus B. M to N is also going to be M to O and O to N. Now, M to O is half of A to O, which is minus half of A. And again, maths half of B. If we take out a common factor of half, we get exactly the same vector for both. This proves it is parallel. Mn is half the size of AB. 
even though the diagram doesn't show that, it's not always accurate. Finally, we're going to prove that points are collinear. The vectors joining pairs of points are parallel and the vectors share a common point. Collinear points are points which lie on the same exact line and share a common point. So we're going to work this out that PQRS is of isosceles trapezium, XQ to XR is in the ratio of 1 to 2, PQ to QY is in the ratio of 1 to 1. We've got to prove that S, X and Y all lie on the same line. They're collinear. So let's work this out. First of all, we need to do a little bit of proof about what PQ is. So PQ is 2P. And it's equal to twice of SR. So SR is the same as P. R to X is one third of R to Q, which is minus Q. Note the way the arrows point to me are going the opposite direction, so it's minus one third of Q. Now, so that's S to R and R to X. So S of X is those two added together. So if you add together P plus minus one third of Q, we get P minus one third Q. So that's S to X. Now we're going to work out X to Y. So here's X to Y. That is equal to X to Q first of all, plus Q to Y. Q to Y is the same as P to Q because it's in the same ratio. So it's going to be 2P. But Q to X is two-thirds of Q. So it's two-thirds of RQ. Now RQ is going in the opposite direction of the vector Q. So it's got to be two-thirds minus Q. And then we have our 2P as we go from Q to Y. So X to Y if I take out a common factor of 2 is minus 1 third Q plus P. If I do a little bit of rearrangement, this becomes P minus 1 third Q. This is exactly the same as the vector we found. So they are parallel because they share a common point of X. We know they lie upon the same line. These lines are parallel in the same direction. It's collinear.